بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة Our subject about sinonasal tumors The most common benign tumors of the nasal cavity are squamous and inverted papilloma and the most common malignant tumors of the nasal cavity is squamous cell carcinoma Maxillary sinus tumors account for 60% Nasal cavity tumors account for 20 to 30 percent. Ethmoid sinus tumors account for 10 to 15 percent, while the frontal sinus and spinal sinus tumors account for 1 percent. Sequimus cell carcinoma accounts for 70 percent of sinonasal malignancy. Adenocarcinoma, 10 percent, and adenoid cystic carcinoma, 10 percent. Nickel workers are at risk of developing sequimus cell carcinoma, while wood workers are at risk of adenocarcinoma, and this often delayed up to 20 years after exposure. The prognosis is poor, with less than 50% of patients surviving for 5 years. Clinical presentation of sinonasal tumors, some or all of the following features are seen unilateral nasal obstruction unilateral blood stained nasal discharge epistaxis in advanced cancers a lump in the nose fleshy friable mass with a bleeding on touch and some of the sinonasal tumors are present with features of sinusitis Less common presenting features are facial swelling, facial pain or paresthesia, proptosis, a neck lump, metastatic nodes. Maxillary sinus tumors symptoms are loose teeth, ulcer on the palate, and cheek swelling, while the ethmoid sinus tumors symptoms are unilateral nasal obstruction, diplopia, and headache. Investigations are CT scan and or MRI with contrast study, endoscopy and biopsy, fine needle aspiration cytology if cervical metastasis. Usually sinonasal tumors present with unilateral fleshy friable masses. This patient has carcinoma of the left maxillary sinus presents with left facial swelling and loss of teeth sometime with palatal ulcer. Investigations are CT scan and MRI with a contrast study. CT scans are excellent for determining bony erosion and destruction and the extent of invasion. This is a coronal CT scan shows right maxillary sinus malignancy with evidence of bone destruction and invasion of the orbit. MRI with contrast study is indicated when there is a suspicion of intracranial extension, dural invasion, and perineural extension like in adenoid cystic carcinoma. And these are MRI with a contrast study shows the intracranial extension and dural invasion. PET CT scan has been used to evaluate for residual tumor, recurrent tumor, and radiated treated fields. And geography is not initially used but can be used for vascular tumors to determine extent and vascularity as well as to allow for embolization prior to any surgical intervention like in the preoperative angiography and embolization for the angiofibroma of the nasopharynx. Lastly, confirm the diagnosis via a biopsy and most often biopsy is performed after imaging rule out encephalases or other vascular issues. 
Treatment, treatment decision should be made by a multidisciplinary team and a specialist head and neck clinic taking into account the type of the tumor and the staging. Surgical resection and or radiotherapy may be required. Combined modality generally tends to be the gold standard, which means surgery with post-operative radiotherapy. Chemotherapy is indicated for better local control and improvement in the survival rate and also indicated as a palliative treatment for large tumors that are non-resectable. If there is a nodal disease of the neck with squamous cell carcinoma, a neck dissection is generally indicated. Our subject, the second subject, is about the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Etiology, the exact etiology of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma is unknown. The factors responsible are, number one, gen genetic factors. Chinese have higher genetic susceptibility to nasopharyngeal cancer. Number two, viral infection, like Epstein-Barr virus is closely associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Number three, environmental factors, air pollution, formalin, formaldehyde, smoking of tobacco and opium, nitrosamines from dry salted fish, smoke from burning of incense, and wood have all been incriminated. Burning of incense هذا موضوع مهم جدا وهو استعمال البخور البخور يعتبر a carcinogenic for the nasopharynx so should be avoided Pathology Sequimus cell carcinoma is the most common in 85% Symptoms of carcinoma of the nasopharynx Nasal symptoms Nasal obstruction and sanguinous or blood stained discharge. Ear symptoms, deafness due to secretor otitis media and pain. Neck symptoms, neck mass due to cervical metastasis. Neurological features, facial pain or numbness due to involvement of a trigeminal nerve. And the eye features like proptosis due to direct spread to orbit or diplopia due to involvement of the abducent nerve. Important note, every patient presenting with a unilateral middle ear fusion must have their postnasal space visualized to exclude nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Investigations, number one, CT scan and or MRI scan with a contrast study. CT scan with contrast from the skull base to the clavicles will show the extent of the primary tumor and cervical metastasis. Number two, biopsy from the nasopharynx. This is a Chinese man presents with metastatic node. This is an Indian man presenting with a metastatic node this is an endoscopical view of the nasopharynx show ulcerophagating mass within the fossa of frozen molar. Fossa of frozen molar is the most common site of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. It lies in the lateral wall just behind the osteocant tube cushion. The carcinoma of the nasopharynx present either with exophytic ulcerative or infiltrative and semimucosal mass. This is another case of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. And this is the axial CT scan shows a mass in the left side of the nasopharynx. And these are multiple axial CT scans shows the nasopharyngeal carcinoma with invasion of the base of the skull. Treatment of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma 
by deep X-ray therapy. And the deep X-ray therapy is given for all stages because the tumor is radiosensitive. Radical neck dissection may be necessary if there are extensive lymph node metastases. Good luck.